Today I'm going to show you how to get electrocuted. Shit. And one more time. Ugh. Fuck! Oh! Shit! Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make a cork hill using homemade plaster cloth. Plaster cloth is a new material I've been using recently. It's been used for a long time in model railroads and even some war gamers have used it as well. And it's great at making really subtle looking hills with some undulation, very natural looking. So the emphasis on this video is really going to be on the plaster cloth, not so much on the cork. There's millions of tutorials on how you can use cork out there to make some good looking hills. Uh, but nevertheless, I'll show you kind of the process that I use in making this entire piece. So the first thing is to find yourself some cork. Now, in the United States, I find this is kind of hard to run across. I got this at a pet store for around 20 bucks, so it was actually pretty expensive. It was the only place I could find it. I'm going to cut it into about 3-inch sections, which you will see here, which is about equivalent of uh, two layers of insulation foam. So once you cut out the pieces of cork, with a handsaw, I'm just going to glue them down to an MDF base. I'm going to glue them with the idea that I'm going to have a hill lined on either side with cliffs. So there's two, two ways that troops can approach this hill. And I'm going to first make the understructure for my plaster cloth. I'm just going to make that of insulation foam. I'm just going to roughly cut out some foam and fit it in between the two cliff faces. They don't have to be exactly touching the cliff you can really just do a rough job I'm just roughing it and giving it some sort of structure as I layer on the plaster cloth which I'll be making out of paper towels which I'll talk about here in a moment which will allow you to do a lot of filling in any gaps and and so you can really just do a quick and easy job with the foam here so I'm gluing down the two layers of foam that result in a nice substructure I like to use the foam instead of some people in the railroad um, hobby like to use crumpled up pieces of newspaper. You could do that too, but this at least gives you a little bit more of a firm base for the plaster cloth. So I'll go ahead and glue these down and I will let them dry. So I actually forgot to film the portion in which I added uh, the slopes to the hill and I also cut away at it with just a sharp hobby knife to at least round the edges of the foam. Um, sorry about that, I forgot to hit play. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hand sander and just sand down the foam to give it nice and even surface for adding the plaster cloth. You can just do this with a regular piece of sandpaper. Here I'm using a power sander. And so go over all the surfaces. You don't have to smooth it down perfectly, but you just want to get rid of any harsh edges that might show through your plaster cloth. And so after just a few minutes sanding it down, you should be ready to go. So now it's time to make our plaster cloth. So I just use the usual proportions for plaster, which is one cup of water to two cups of plaster. And once I mix that together, I add a little bit more water. So I'd say about the consistency of, I don't know, like cake batter. It's a little more watered down than just your normal plaster mixture, but not by much. And so I mix that all together, stir it together. And then I'm just going to take strips here of paper towel. I'm going to dip them into the plaster. I'm going to kind of wipe off any excess, run it through my fingers, and just apply it to uh, to the hill. And what I love about using paper towel is you can crumple it up uh, into kind of like a roll into a ball and use that to fill in any gaps or seams in between the insulation. You can do a lot with the paper towel, more so than I think you can do with uh, normal plaster cloth, which is basically ace bandages covered in plaster. You, these are much more malleable. They can really fit to any surface, and I like this so much better. And plaster cloth, if you buy it from a hobby store, is crazy expensive. 15 bucks for just a little bit of it, whereas paper towels, super cheap. You add your own plaster, and it's a nice alternative, and I think it turns out even better. Because as you'll see, as you put down layers of this paper towel, you almost lose the paper towel. Like It just feels like you're working with plaster, and so you can smooth over the top of the paper towels, you can get a real nice texture. And if you've ever used actual plaster cloth, you can really still see the nylon on it or whatever is used for the ace bandage type material. You can still see it. It's quite apparent. So you have to cover it again with another layer of something. Whereas this, 
it once this dries it just looks like straight plaster you can't even see the paper towel on it so that's what i'm doing i'm just covering it all at this point i'm making bigger pieces so once i kind of have covered up any gaps and and holes in the insulation with the uh, with the paper towels i then rip off bigger pieces and lay it across the surface of the hill to give nice smooth looking surface to it and so here it is once it has dried and i really like this look if you look at it there is really just subtle undulation of the ground like the ground is not just an even slope it has little divots and little raised areas and i really think that adds to the realistic look of these hills which is why i'm pretty much going to be using this method for all the hills i make in the future i think it just looks really good and just as a frame of reference here was a hill i did in a recent video my faux fur hill and usually when i would make foam hills this is what i do i would just cut a piece of foam i would sand it down to be a pretty much even slope and then you know cover it with some material and that doesn't look very realistic hills aren't perfect slopes out in nature so by using the plaster cloth if you notice there's it's much more subtle in its slope and it's and, and the ground is uneven and broken and i think that that gives a much more realistic look to it and when i you look at the finished product i think it definitely looks more like a hill than the faux fur once we finish with all the plaster cloth now time to add our rocks and grit onto our hill and so i'm adding rocks down at the bottom of the cliffs because you know if you look at any cliff face you see uh, often broken rocks sitting at the bottom so i'm just using some gravel mixed with some aquarian rocks and then topped off with some sand and that will give our kind of rough texture at the bottom of our cliffs here all right so i'll do that on both sides of the cliff i'll let the pva dry for a while which is what i used to hold that down and then i also went ahead and added some some grit, some sand to the top of the hill because that's going to be a little bit more rough terrain than the bottom. And now I'm going to add my plaster earth concoction, which if you've seen my previous videos is basically equal parts water, plaster, and PVA glue and a little bit of sand thrown in there to give a very subtle look of earth or dirt with subtle texture to it. So just using my hand and a big popsicle stick to... Uh, add this texture to my my hill. So now I'm going to paint the cliffs using Zenithal highlighting with an airbrush. It's actually my third attempt on painting these cliffs. I had a hard time getting the effect that I wanted. But here I'm going to take some of Leo surface primer, the gray, and I'm going to mix a little black in there to make a really deep dark gray. And I'm just going to airbrush the entirety of these cliffs, covering all those nooks and crannies with it. And then I'm going to go and just take regular gray. I'm going to shoot it at about a 45 degree angle so that it picks out uh, most of the highlights of the rocks jutting out while leaving the deep recesses still that dark gray. And then finally for my final highlight, I'll shoot down white at about almost a 90 degree angle just hitting the very top of the rock to give a nice look of, of highlight and deeper shadows. In the end, I gotta say I don't think cork is the material for me when simulating rock faces. I just wasn't quite happy with how this turned out. All of those, all those holes and those little nooks and crannies make it really hard to paint, in my opinion. So I think I'll probably be sticking with the Woodland Scenic plaster molds for right now. I might revisit cork if I do any desert terrain. I think it, its colors will lend a little bit better for that. Before your typical gray rock. I don't know i wasn't all that impressed with the cork actually so and i'll talk about that at the conclusion of the video and once i finished airbrushing the cliff face i'm going to go over it with a black wash this is just a layer wash that i mixed with a little bit of water and i'm going to go over the entirety of the cliff face to really bring out those deep recesses and it's going to be thin enough that the gray and the white highlights will still shine through and after this layer has dried, I will even go over it a second time, hitting the areas I really want to darken to give a more realistic look to my rocks. And once the wash is dried, it's time to paint the rest of the hill in my earth color, which I'm going to use burnt umber as my base here. And I'm just going to do my usual triad, which will be this base layer of burnt umber. And then I'll take the burnt umber, mix a little buff titanium in it, and do an overbrushing of the hill. And then do my final high highlight with just a really subtle buff titanium. So here is my first highlight layer, taking that buff titanium and putting it into the burnt umber, 
loading my brush up quite a bit, so this really isn't a dry brush, more of an overbrush, and then covering the entirety of the hill in it. And then once this is finished, we'll just do our, our very high highlight of our buff titanium, and we'll get what I think is a really pleasing look for the broken ground that will be poking through our flock. And so now it's time to add our flock or static grass. And so I'm actually gonna be using a technique I got off of Luke Towen's awesome channel. He does a lot of cool diorama kind of things. And I'll put a link to his channel down below. And he uses these six millimeter tufts, which I'm just gonna place randomly around my hill in conjunction with a bunch of different lengths of static grass. I'm gonna be using four millimeter static grass, which is kind of hard to come across, uh, in conjunction with your usual two millimeter static grass to give a lot of different lengths and differentiate the look of my grass, which I think gives it a more realistic look. And so now I'm gonna take my four millimeter grass and apply it all around those six millimeter tufts using a static grass applicator, which I highly recommend getting if you plan on doing lots of terrain and using static grass, it is amazing. And after I cover all the different six millimeter tufts with this four millimeter graph, just to get a very subtle differentiation between the grass length, then I'm going to go over the entirety of my hill with my normal two millimeter grass. This is the grass that you can easily get from Woodland Scenics and often most wargaming companies put out a two millimeter grass. And I'm going to be using a mixture of the light green and the harvest gold from Woodland Scenics. I'm gonna change up the ratio at the bottom of the hill. I'll use more of the light green. And as I move up the slope, I'll add more and more of the harvest gold because oftentimes you see more of the greenery on hills on, its, on the slopes and at the bottom than at the top as the water runs down it. So here again, just adding more uh, watered down PVA to my hill. And then I'm just going to sprinkle on more of the harvest gold at the top here and making sure I get a full body effect to my grass. You might have to go over it several times. Sometimes you'll notice when you kind of shake off the grass, there's some areas that are very lightly flocked. And so it might take a few passes. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some normal flock to my hill. So I'm first gonna spray it down with alcohol to wet all the static grass. I'm gonna spray it with scenic glue, which is just hodgepodge and water. Then I'm going to put different kinds of regular woodland scenic flock on it. I'm gonna put some coarse turf all across it to simulate weeds and uh, little shrubs. Then I'm also going to be putting some fine turf all across it as well to kind of tie in the different colors. And I think using a conjunction of the static grass and the normal flock gives a really nice natural look to your hill. The static grass is really pointed, really jagged. Uh, and if you add some of the normal kind of flock to your hill, it will give a more rounded look to your grass and it will look a little bit more natural in the end. So here I'm placing some light green coarse flock all across different sections of my board. And then I'm also going to be using one of my favorite flocks from Woodland Scenics, the burnt grass flock. And that's good for tying in some of the disparate colors. You know, I have some really dark green, some light yellows. And so by sprinkling this, this fine turf over the top of them, it kind of ties in the yellows and the greens and has a really natural look to it. So I just sprinkle this over pretty much the entirety of the hill, even over just the normal two millimeter static grass. I'll, I'll pinch a little bit of that on there and it'll, again, it'll look like just small little weeds. And so here is my finished hill and I put a few of my sub Roman figures from my new Saga Warband up on there. And overall, I was really pleased with how this hill turned out. i not a real big fan of the cork. It caused me a lot of problems. I know some people love this stuff. For I'm not sure it's for me though. I think I'll stick with Woodland Scenics plaster molds for the future. But anyways, I do like how I flocked this. I think I'm gonna use this more, combining the different lengths of, of static grass and then using your typical foam based flock on top of it to give a nice realistic look to your terrain. So I'm glad that I ran across that. And again, all credit goes to Luke Towen, who is a master at, uh, at terrain building. He's the one that really turned me on to this technique. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Hope you got something out of this tutorial. If nothing else, go and make your own plaster cloth. I, I swear it's great material to use for wargaming terrain. Uh, but if you like this video, please do subscribe, leave comments down below, if, especially if you can think of any way to paint the, paint the cork a little bit better than I did. 
and I look forward to seeing you guys soon when I put out my next terrain video. Take care.